go above deck uh, and head back to the front of the ship. Just beyond the barrier of the windshield, um, Vasher, you see a floating sword just at the very front of the ship. All right, there he is. Oh my god, I think we're gonna get a new a new home. I think if we be huh? all right, yeah, all right, and what I'll walk up. To? I'm talking to the sword. Because we no, can't it's not a sword. sword. It's a mace that now. Doesn't, doesn't make much sense. So yep, it's Don't currently worry. it is currently a mace. Yeah, the mate. I'm talking to the mace. Sorry, I've called her a sword this whole time. Anyways, all right, and I walk out of the barrier. All right, you walk out of the barrier. The cold doesn't really bother you too much, uh, as we had stated before. Um, as you move out into the space, um, you do see, uh, getting closer to him, uh, his form. He is built. Uh, he is currently wearing some kind of like plated armor with a sigil of, um, like, uh, Sephiria. Looks like he was some kind of soldier and p- potentially fairly high ranking. Um, his sword that he's currently holding looks like uh, a glaive of some kind. Sturdy and heavy. Um, it's currently cut open at the bottom, so it's just like an open space um, with uh, the blade itself looking fairly hefty. Uh, it's suspended in the air as he doesn't let it touch the ground. Are you the one Hail, that, friend! Uh, are you the one that was sent to fight me? Why, well, yeah. Can you? Why do you want to fight? I mean, I'm. You're a ghost. That's kind of cool. I don't think I've talked to a ghost yet. That's cool. Anyways, I'm, what's happening? All the ones that were uh, turned invisible. I, I died without the chance to prove myself in combat, as I had wished. Your friend said that you are capable. I you, you know I. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's right. I think he's right. You, you look strong. <sighs> yeah, uh, I. But... I think I'm. I'm pretty strong. Uh, I. You know, I'm down for a good brawl. It's. It's been a while. I think I missed out on the last fight, so I'd kind of like to, to throw throw down. It'll help me train up for this challenge. If you say so. Um, All right. For my part, I'm. This really is just a contest to see if I am worthy of the death that I wished. I do not wish to kill you, friend. All right. I appreciate that. I'd rather not die either. You seem like an amiable fellow. That being said, I will be holding back a certain amount of my skill. All right. Yeah, that's probably fair. I won't push my luck. I've got a lot to live for. I've got a lot to uphold, too. I have a dream as well, to become a knight of the realm. Ah. That is... That is a dream. I had a friend like that once. His name was Vash. How did they turn out? She did great things. Oh, what's her name? In death... Things like names escape me. Was it, uh... Your time will come and you will know too. Oh, Her name or her... Or... Uh, not knowing names. What it feels like not to know names. Uh, it is unpleasant. Uh, that happens a lot. Well, hmm. uh, well, if it's uh, it's if it's Lady Everett, uh, I'll pass on a message for you. But uh, for now, and I'll fall into a, a stance. Okay. Yeah, as you fall uh, into a stance. Um, He looks at you and kind of tilts its head for a moment. And he nods. Give me just a second to finish up here. All right. As I've had to create a character on the fly. All good. All right. Place your bets, everybody. How many gold on Vasher the Slasher? I don't think we're there, so... I'll no put gold. a copper on him. <laughs> and on the right, we have this ghost. To uh, 60 gold. 60 gold on the ghost, all right. You know what? <laughs> I'll, I'll put Tetsu's life on the ghost. Honestly, a little, a little I mutter silently in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> if Ash were fighting a ghost, I'd probably bet 60 gold against him. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Well, if that happens, I'm taking your sixty gold. Uh, well, see, I no one's there to hear it. So. It's just a dream. <laughs> She's a dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. If Zavala gambles gold in her sleep and no one's around to hear it, you did know. she even really gamble? Is she even Zala? True. <sighs> okay. So. I think I've got this right. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, it should be fine. As uh, you two kind of square off, let me switch here. Square rope. Let me grab a ghost real quick. Grab a ghoul. Grab a ghoul. A ghoul. Hey, boo boo. I got a ghoul in the basket. I'm going to say you guys are about here. We can delete these. Uh, is Vasher's token? Uh, so go ahead and, and roll initiative. All right. Two? No, an eight. Oh, there you go. I rolled a 23. <laughs> Got a 74. Are you going to be on the initiative table? You're not on I would like to be. Okay. He's oh, just... I forgot that your bubble is tied to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to put you like over here on the side. All good. And 23. All right, and he will roll secretly. Not bad. He didn't pass to do much. Okay. I'm um, sorry. I need to pull up stuff. Winds whipping in the general vicinity of the space. Um, the Vashers, you take a stance, uh, preparing yourself to fight against uh, this person. Um, Deathwing kind of goes first. He I'll gets just, the draw. I'll, I'll go. Ready, set, fight. Uh, Basher, you see three runes illuminate on this person's uh, equipment. One on his plate mail. A strange, fiery rune appears on it. A on the rune sword, warrior. Uh, on his sword, you see a lightning rune uh, just erupt from the space. Uh, and from the helmet that just appeared onto his person, you see a strange, almost like dark rune uh, permeating around the space. Okay. I know what two of those do. I don't know what that one he is. He passes in his initiative to you. Uh, and I will point at him uh, and say, let's get him, Zay. And I'll cast my Hexblade's Curse, which uh, it's just a bonus action. Okay. Uh, it's not a spell. And then I will go in uh, for a green flame blade attack. So I'll step up and I'll swipe at him. All right. Roll to hit. Bah! Ooh, uh, 27. 27 does hit. Go and roll uh, damage. All right. So that is this plus this. Uh, so that'll be 20 points of damage. 20 points of damage. Very nice. Oh, plus another three. So 23 for Hex. Got players. it. As a Zay uh, cracks onto his side, it kind of passes through him. It doesn't quite make a contact like you normally would but you see a blast of arcane energy pass through uh, his system. It kind of shakes him for momentarily um, as he phases in and out. Um, the energy does rock him to some extent. All right. Then I'll say back to you. Okay. Uh, next up is Tethryn. Uh, 
I'm cheering for the hit. Okay. Nice, nice swing, sweetie. And next I'll, up, uh, bonus action. You see him what? touch the rune on his helmet and pull it back. And as he does, his body in, grows in size. Okay, so stone rune. I see. As his body grows in size, his strength increases exponentially. Oh. As he spins the blade in his hand and cuts in your uh, direction. Uh, how do I roll the hand? Uh, oh. You might not have dice to To be honest, to be fair. Uh, does a 24 hit? Uh, that'll hit. Okay, you take. 11 points of uh, slashing damage um, as the sword uh, doesn't quite make contact with you. Um, the, the sword isn't ghostly either. There's something about this particular blade that has a weird ethereal something to it. As it slashes through your armor, almost negating your armor on, on the hit, you take an additional three points of right. uh, lightning damage. Ah, this one's shocky. Okay, that's action bonus action. All right. Uh, then I will cast a divine favor on myself. Oh, uh, sorry. For this movement, he's just going to move over here. Oh, sure. I'll cast divine favor of myself and then go for another flame blade strike. Go for it. Ooh, it's a 16. 16 does not hit. As you uh, go to cut into his form, you expect it to pass through him being ghostly-like, but something about his armor just like slashes across it, uh, not able to cut directly through him, and instead it cuts upwards, skewing your... Uh, your uh, sorry, no, it's not a slash. It's a, it's a mace, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a bash. Yeah, so as it goes to bash, it kind of like skids off the armor. Sparks erupt from the front of... Uh, his plate armor, giving him momentum for his next swing. Forehead moment. The first hit was a crit, too. Uh, that's on me. Anyways, uh, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, Tether. Well, if we're going to fight, we should fight fair, and I'll kind of do some runes in the air, and all of a sudden, Basher will begin to grow twice his size, <laughs> and I'm casting in large on Basher. So you have advantage on strength saves and checks, and you have an extra d4 when you hit something. Oh, Pog, okay. And uh, you're twice your size. Basher, uh, you begin to grow in size, kind of confused at a moment, and then you see Tethryn just kind of doing some uh, arcane sigils and winks at you uh, from within the barriers. You're big, and now I'm big. Um, the... The vision of the person in front of you is kind of taken aback for a moment, not knowing you were capable of something like this. Uh, him kind of turned away from Tethryn. He doesn't realize that Tethryn's the one that did it. Uh, and says, oh, you are truly mighty. Maybe there perhaps isn't a reason for me to hold back. Oh, uh, I, I give a up. thumbs up to that. I just, just thumbs up. I just look got it. scared. All right. That's my turn. I'm checking some real quick. Cool. Um, you uh, see him quickly slap the rune on uh, on his blade. The uh, arcane lightning begins to arc in all directions. And you see something in his eyes kind of begin to glow um, mystically in your form. All of a sudden you see these strange paths leading in and away from you. Um, not entirely sure what they are, but it's kind of fluctuating around uh, your space. I know what this is. All right. He yeah. smiles and uh, goes in for another attack. Actually, he goes in for two attacks. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess he is seventh level at least. 20 hit. Oh, uh, 20 will hit. Uh, that's not that bad. Uh, eight points of slashing damage on the first attack. As he cuts into your form, uh, the movement much faster than before, he doubles back for a second slash. Ooh, 13. Uh, that will not hit. Ah! You, you quickly oh, spin oh. around, you quickly spin around your, uh, your uh, mace and bat away his blade before he's able to slash into you. 
Also, when he hits me, I'm gonna use my reaction to cast Hellish Rebuke. Go for uh, it. So he needs to make a dex save of 15. Dex save of 15. Uh, that is a save. All right. Well, he will still take uh, five points of fire damage, rounded down by half, and another three oh. points uh, for being the target. Okay. So, total of wait, hold on. So five and three. Wait, I'm confused. How much so he t- he takes five points from the hellish rebuke, and then three points for being the hexblade's curse. Got it. Got it. Okay. okay. And those are two two separate effects. Got it, got it. Um, as uh, you bat away his blade with your uh, with your mace, a blast of arcane energy hits through his form, and he ripples once more, uh, attempting to shake it off. In that kind of like phased moment, it is your turn. All right, and then I kind of feel like I just have to try and you know beat him down. So I'll go for another. Anything else I can do on my bonus actions? Uh, not at the moment. So I'll go in for another green flame blade. Uh, he's going to look directly at you, and a spark of lightning is going to course through you. Um, you have disadvantage on that attack. Oh, well, that's fine, because I rolled a 14. So, meme on! Ayo! Okay. Um, as you go in for for the strike, he parries away your uh, your attack. God damn it! Let me hit you. Um, <laughs> yep, that's it. Okay, uh, tether. I look at the fight and I think maybe I should have got yes, <laughs> Uh This is awkward. Uh, that's my turn. <laughs> Next up is uh, Ghost's turn. Um, with his bonus action. Actually, not yet. He's going to spin around and cut uh, with his blade with his first attack. Ooh, that is a 29 to hit. So it's a you plus will take... 10 to hit. Okay. You will take um, 12 points of slashing damage. In that moment, you see a, uh, a fourth rune you hadn't seen before on his back that flashes with arcane fire. Oh. Yep. As the fire surges up through the blade, mid slash through you, it scorches directly onto your person, dealing an additional. Let me do this real quick. Seven points of fire damage. You mean oh. go ahead and roll a uh, strength saving throw? Uh, I did. Uh, 18. You have advantage. I had rolled with advantage. It's an 18. Cool. 18. Okay, then uh, you are fine. You guys remember Matthias Redwall? This is just him, but dead. This is um, that wasn't even his last name. That's Change. true. <laughs> oh, that's true. I did change it. You're right. <laughs> Second I don't attack. think I actually knew his name, so I couldn't understand him. That's that was the first attack. That's fair. Oh, Ooh, uh, 13. Uh, that will not hit. As he spins around for a second strike, uh, you bat it away once again with your uh, mace. This time he kind of like is thrown a little bit because he had a lot of momentum behind that one. Dasher, it's your turn. Uh... I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to put my hand on my chest and heal up for 15. Okay. Uh, and then... I'm going to consume my channel divinity uh, as a bonus action to regain a spell slot. Go for it. And that'll be my turn. Okay. Tethern, it's your turn. He's hurt. <laughs> he bash again to shrink back to his normal size. And as Tethran's kind of scratching his head, he'll open his eyes. They'll be glowing. He's casting another spell. Basher begins to suddenly move more quickly, more nimble. And uh, Tethran casts haste on Basher. Okay. 
Okay, that's good. Uh, Vasher, you shrink back to your normal size, and then your speed almost doubles. Uh, as you're moving with insane uh, insane speed, you notice that the ghost is, once again, thrown aback by your ability to magically change your uh, form and go into quick speeds like this. So your speed's doubled, you have 2 to your AC, you have advantage on deck saves, you have an additional attack each turn, and you hope I don't lose concentration. Yeah, hopefully nothing else shows up. Thanks. Next what up here for? is the ghost seeing uh, what you are doing. There's just so much fun things to do with this guy. Raru knights are cool. Ramu Knights? Not being quite uh, sure what you're about to do, you see another rune uh, appear down uh, down by his like left arm. On his gauntlet, a frost rune erupts forward. And you see like this ice beginning to shear across his entire form. Oh boy, oh boy. All right. You're a tonky lad, I see. And he's going to go ahead and take the dodge action. Okay, so attacks are at disadvantage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, nothing to do about it. First slap. Uh, you know the class? What was that? I heard first slap. Did he freeze? Yeah, I think yep. the microwave. Oh, yeah, I heard that first slap. And Not then... the microwave. Not the toaster strudel. Here, I'll roll for him. He's just going to attack, right? No, no, no. He's, He's going to come up with a plan. What are you talking about? I think he vanished. His internet might have gone down. Uh, we knew him well. Bastion um, just Bastion. Um, the ghost rolled. does a Spartan kick, and he falls off the ship. Nice. Bye, Vash. <laughs> See how you like me shooting your pets. Uh, I'll just roll the hit for him. It's just a plus eight. What wow, else would he have done? That's cheating. You know? Yeah. He's gonna pray to God. Well, he okay. said he was gonna slow. slap him, so. Yeah, he, he did say slappy. Does a. Oh, it's at disadvantage. So does the a. Hey. Does an 11 hit. Eleven does not hit, unfortunately, but he does have a second right. attack. Pretty close, though. Ah, should this slap? Uh, true. He does have a second attack. It's a good point. Wait, does Vasher have a second attack? Oh yeah, he does. Yeah, he's yeah. fifth level. Something. Oh. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen will just hit. Nice. Um, I need to read how this mace works. He's gonna if definitely right, smite he doesn't him. Doesn't do anything. Yeah, uh, the mace go. doesn't do anything, but you know it does do something. Hellish Rebuke or some make shit. Make sure I can do it. Or gotta hex. make sure I can do it. The Divine Smite. Yup. Pachoo! 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 That's, that's gonna hurt. I'm gonna use all of his spell slots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a joke. Uh, <laughs> I go today. So because he's a ghost, oh my I get... I get... <sighs> uh, so I get 2d8 for the first one. I'm using 4. So I have... 5d8 plus an additional d8 because he's undead, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, so yeah. first, I need the mace damage. You can only spite yeah. once, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can use as many spell slots as you want, right? No. Uh, let's first go. Let's see, I see, I see. What's his highest level spell slot? Three, two, two. two. Oh, one. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, because he's both like that. Yeah. Fifth? One. Oh, hey, Zen. Hey, all right. Hey, Xander, you're sliding for 3d8. <sighs> what? Yeah. Wait. All right. Yeah. I hit for a 20 on the first hit. Did that hit? With uh, disadvantage? Yes. Then, yeah, that definitely hits. All right. Okay, yeah, we're good. removing everything. No. And, <laughs> that's fair. But I don't see your 20. I don't see it either. Yeah, I don't see it either. Unless it's that loading to hit. I don't see it, but I'm also not looking. <laughs> yeah, there's a loading to hit for him, but it rolled up nothing. Alright, All right, back whatever. to me! Believe... Oh, whoa, 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 sorry. I, everything has been cutting out my audio. What has happened? You cheating. Oh, you, you dealt 22 damage. 
Fine with me. Uh, 25 damage, and that was my first attack. I still have another one. Yeah. Sounds yep. good to me. 25 points uh, of damage. As you strike into his form, uh, oh. a blast of divine light strikes through, um, dealing a, a hefty sum of, of damage. Sorry, on it's form. actually 29 points, because I have divine favor up. Got it. Uh, and that's radiant damage in case it matters on the divine yeah. favor and smites. Oh, it does matter. Uh, you so, boost him. Yeah, whatever, whatever that means. Um, all right, and then I missed the second attack because I got a natty one on the, on the first one. Natty. Understood. With that, it dealt a critical blow against him. As you see, he he's not quite able to retain his form. Um, he kind of shrinks back down to his standard size, and he kind of falls to a single knee, the blade kind of down on the deck. Uh, also, is it... Divine Smite is 2d8 at first level, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, then... Uh, well, the, you got an additional d8 because he's undead. Because he's undead, and then that's the Flame Blade damage. So another 8. Sorry, there were a lot of numbers flying. That's fine. All right, so another 8 total points to sum up whatever it is. And I say, you're a very worthy opponent. You would have made an honorable... Had a, a glorious death in battle. And you too will one day as well. And it is this day. He, he, he has fallen to a single knee. And the shit stains on his pants vanish. <laughs> the general pissiness of his shoes also vanish. Strange scarring. Kind of overriding. What uh, what truly happened? Would you like uh, me to give you a funeral rite? I think that's all right. I can finally see my way. He stands. I thank both Put of out. you for this. He takes his sword. And he extends it to you. I take it. And I extend my take hand. It. Yeah. Wait, to who who are you pointing at? You're you, no, you <laughs> extended it towards Stethrin. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, of course. He I'm did ask you for help. No, that makes sense to me. He asked him for help. I'm the one who helped him. Yeah, whatever. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take the sword. It's really heavy. Um, you do feel a strange magical pulse from it. Yeah, of course. If you ever need anything, you know, call her. I think I'll be right now. And I extend my hand for a handshake to this ghost, and then I say, "What? What is your name, O oh, nobleman?" My name is Clyde. In a different life, he goes and he gives you a firm handshake. You feel almost a pulse of life. Hmm. I want to cast a spell. What would that be? Don't know. Destroy Divine undead. undead. <laughs> Divine undead. A pulse of life? Oh, shit. I don't know. As oh, really... oh. Wait, wait, wait. wait. And yeah. I say, if you know your way, then follow me and my god, Netrin. No, I think I'll be fine with mine. Ah, damn it. All right. Fair enough. It was worth a shot. He releases uh, your grasp and says, You said you were heading to Vizima, right? Um, yep. Yeah, that sounds right. At some point. Uh, she she ran an inn. Um, something to do with day. I, I can't quite recall. Her, her name was Diana, though. If you happen to see her, tell her that I'm at peace. Will do. I will. I will do this. Well, in the name I'll of do. my God. Yeah. Okay. I'll, ju I'll just Catherine. do it for you. So. <sighs> Whatever. He he chuckles and turns and starts to walk 
in this direction. Both of you, for a moment, swear you see a hall full of great warriors. Just beyond some veil. He turns back one more time and nods in your direction before everything vanishes. That guy's badass. And I walk back inside from the barrier. As I'm walking with Asher. Well, you should have heard how he died. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, You know, it looks like I killed him. So. Yeah, well. Uh, and then I'll recast the bubble. Anyways, cool boy. Rude. Well, it takes 10 minutes to cast. So. Oh, well, yeah, I'll stand here. Yeah, that's a cool sword you got. Oh, oh God. And I'll walk off. And then um, after the bubble's up, I'll identify the blade. Okay. Um, the blade is a moon-touched glaive. Moon-touched glaive. Very cool. Oh, wow. Actually, it's technically a plus one moon touch clay, but got it. Very cool. Neat. As the ship be, uh, continues sailing on for some time, night begins to fall, and you all feel the ship beginning to descend, mm -hmm. slowly drifting below the sea of clouds that you had been skipping upon for a few days now. And the strange feeling of, like, losing altitude, just dropping. All of your ears collectively pop. After some time, the air is still quite cold, but there's no rush of wind as the ship <laughs> seems to dock. We are landing. We are landing. Rimber run. Next stop, Nulvaskran. Next stop, Nulvaskran. You hear ringing out throughout the space. Well, it's about time. Oh, hey, t <clears throat> Catherine. T so, whatever what, happened to that? What did you say? Whatever happened to that experiment you were trying to do with the door? Why'd you remove it? Oh, um. Turns out the ship can't move if I if I turn it on. So, you know, had to you know not do that. Okay. But that reminds me, I'm going to cast Reduce on the door so it shrinks to half its size and becomes one-eighth of its weight. Okay. You cast Reduce and it becomes a, a, like, a, like a tower shield size uh, door rather than the large door that it was before. So it's, it's much easier to handle. So. Much easier to carry. You can actually just strap that to your back. Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. I don't really know where we're going next, but... Yeah, weren't we meeting somebody or something? For a game or some shit? I don't remember. No, that's in the capital, but we have to find our way from Rimber Run to the capital, I think. Why didn't we just... Fight? I think somebody has something to do here, but I can't quite... Oh, I remember. Be, so. When were you getting Zala a new hand or some shit? Oh, Is that what we're doing here? Maybe, I don't. It's... I don't oh, keep track of everything uh, we need to do. I thought you would. I mean, it's not any of my business, necessarily. We should go ask her. Away. Yeah, yeah, I suppose we should figure out what's going on. <sighs> Might as well gather you, everybody. All of you gather your belongings, and you all meet uh, together in the hold below, waiting for the doors to open to let you out into Rimba Run. A few uh, sailors are just starting to unbuckle some of the things that have been fastened down that seems to have been be like cargo that they're dropping off here in Rimbaran, and uh, they're potentially loading some cargo onto 
to move to the next location. The captain comes down below. Oh, I hope everyone had a smooth flight. Sorry for the disturbances. You never know what you're going to come across in the skies. Of course. Whatever happened to the gnome? Where is the gnome? I believe he's still in his room. Potentially packing. Not sure. All right. That's it. Goodbye. Uh, he nods and kind of gives the ones that take the handshake. Uh, he gives each of you a handshake and he heads back to oversee the offloading of goods into um, Rimber Run. The doors kind of open and a chill wind blasts into the space. Um, but the, um, the walking planks are put down and you're able to disembark the ship. Well. Off we go. Do we remember what we're supposed to do here? I thought we were looking for the monastery for Yeska here. I thought we stopped doing I thought he was done. Oh, are we done? No, oh. I, I thought he didn't want to go back home. Why are we... Is that right, Yeska? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't mind going back home, but I, I don't need I'm pretty, to. I'm pretty sure the Haven Monastery was a lot farther south of oh. here. I thought it was Apparently it north moves. of Rimber Run. Oh. I have. I don't know. I didn't live there. I mean, it's not here. It's a. We'd have to travel a little bit. Didn't you? I just think there's isn't there someone there that can maybe help you? Well, yes, apparently there's someone there who judges people, and if you are judged, um, he said fairly, then he, uh, they help heal you. That's what the. That's what the queen, the the, the lord said. Hmm. Interesting. So, yes, there is someone that could help me, but there will also be people to help me in the capital, I'm sure. So if Jessica doesn't care about his father or whatever, we don't have to go. Easy as that? I wouldn't put it that way, but... Well, I'm good either yeah, way. I don't think we need to go. Oh, well, maybe... It doesn't matter. We should decide where we sleep tonight. So I guess we should find transportation to Vizimar, then. It does seem that way. You guys are still on the airship. You guys disembarking? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, we're going to Nuvalskron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're yeah. traveling the planet. They're globe trotters. You ever heard of uh, hijacking an airship? Uh, mm. have, you, have you seen around the world in eighty days? True. You, you guys uh, begin walking down the planks into the cold air of Rimba Run. The first thing that strikes you is the amount of trees just in the vicinity. Uh, looks like River Run's pretty much in the middle of a forest. Heavy, tall pines kind of encircle a rather tall wall that surrounds the entirety of the town. Or the city, rather. Uh, I'm disguised self with my hat this whole time. Just, yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm going to put your guys' markers... Here, this is the, the airship docks. Did you draw this? Yep. This is nice. Smaller. Is this what you paid that guy for and then he never got back to you on? No, I just, uh, I paid him for something else. for, what you call it? Hmm. The other map. As you guys disembark, um, you get lower and lower, and the walls kind of cover uh, your immediate vicinity. Um, you see that there's two other airships currently docked in uh, two of the other stands. Um, they're currently being loaded with heavy-looking logs that are being uh, that ascend and are put into their cargo bays. Um, there is a rather good-sized crowd around us. The third airship seems to be more commercial, like travel rather than anything that is used for transportation of goods. Um, as you wade into these crowds, um, you're in, in unfamiliar territory. Very chilling uh, air surrounds you um, as you are in Rimber Run. Welcome. The area is unfamiliar. You're not entirely sure where to go now uh, next, but you're free to explore the city as much as you wish. It is currently 10 o'clock in the evening. Well, most of you are kind of jet-lagged just from sitting around or 
uh, just being stuck on an airship for the last three days. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Should we find Senti yes, Sento? Do, do these kinds of trees look familiar to you? Mm, they probably do. What do you say, DM? Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, not really. Okay. Hmm. Didn't he come out? Bash, are you with him? Didn't he come out of the uh, Superior Forest or something? Yeah, that's why I thought that it was farther south. I was confused because I just. I mean, Jessica might have honestly found me that day, but. Well, the Lord did say that finding the monastery is difficult. Yeah, so. He just gave us a sort of lead. Also, Tethryn, did that man say that. The inn was here or in Visimar? In Visimar. Mm. Oh, we have a while to go. I wanted to meet new people. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. How odd. Oh, we should get looking for some place to stay unless I wanted to enjoy the festivities of whatever this place is. No, I, th I think finding a place to stay is a very good idea. Yeah. Seems like the, uh,. Right move. You guys start moving beyond these gates here. It looks like this used to be an old wall, and this is a recent expansion um, that the city made for the airship docks. Everything within these walls um, looks like it's made out of heavy, fine woods. Um, thatch roofs kind of coat everything, and the fireplaces are lit all over the, uh, the town. Um, as you push in a little bit further, you see more signs of life. Um, as housing is immediately to your right as you pass through the thoroughfares here. Hmm. Um, you see a fork in the road. You can either go left or right from this point here. Uh, to the left, you see what looks like lively commercialism as people are moving uh, up and about to the space uh, down in this direction. This way uh, looks a little bit more quiet, residential, um, uh, to an extent right here uh here it looks like a little bit further on there's maybe a church of some kind and once again it becomes lively at a much further distance uh, you guys want to go to sleep somewhere i mean that that was the plan Jessica. okay well it would be nice uh, can we sleep here uh probably not people don't usually like when you sleep outside in mm. cities yeah, it's kind in, of cold anyway. In your immediate surroundings, um, snow has begun to pile up. It looks like it's been um, dug away to uh, let room on the paths. The paths are very wide in this town. Um, as you see, heavy, deep trenches of what look like rolling carts have go through here fairly often. Uh, most likely carrying the heavy logs that you see uh, the airships taking away. There are several guards posted uh, at every corner that you could talk to. There's also pedestrians and just people uh, making their way through the evening. It is 10 p.m. It's not entirely too late. Um, street lamps are currently lit across the, the entirety of the town. Fires are like going on so that it's visible to see throughout the space. Hmm. Okay. Hey, mister. I'll call out to a guard. a guard. One of the town guards looks to uh, towards you and walks over. Mm, do you know where I can sleep around here? Uh, you folks knew? Yeah. Um, yeah. Kinda. Well, nice uh, to meet all of you and welcome to Rimber Run. Um, Thank you. The, the, just a few words of caution. Don't go beyond the walls at night uh, if you don't need to. Why is that? Uh, we're in a heavy forest. There are creatures out there that are mm. difficult to work with. Um, but if you're looking for a quick rest um, down that way, he points in this direction. There's our town square uh, where you'll find um, the Lost Lamb Barbecue and Inn. Uh, if you head in that direction, that's more commercial. Then uh, you can find the Rent Tax Tavern. They usually. Uh, carry people if you so choose to stay there um there is another inn a little bit further it's a uh, pricier uh with the richer parts of town i suppose uh i usually don't recommend they're very 
Uh, they're, they're not so used to foreigners. Mm. All right. Good night. Uh, yes. Well, if you need anything else, uh, the runners be more than happy to assist you. He kind of salutes and heads back. Um, those of you that... I'm going to say Vasher and uh, Raylan. Go ahead and roll perception checks. Oh, yeah. Tall as fuck. Yeah. Yeet. Oh, yay. Ooh, nat 20, baby. 22. Both Not of you, bad. Both of you immediately notice this gentleman, his armor, uh, while in the designs and shapes of plate mail, is made entirely out of wood. Oh, is that that armor? Oh, man. I wish that I would remember it. Oh, yeah. It's the hardened pine. pine. Yeah, that hardened iron. pine. No, no, iron. Not iron. Oh yeah, this is where they get the uh, the thing from. Yeah. Uh, it it does look like it's made of some kind of blue uh, wood uh, that has been polished to a shine, um, and his sword on his side is also made of wood. Huh. Huh. You know, I just as bought he, some armor, but as he goes back to uh, his station, um, you guys are free to either head in this direction towards. Um, uh, towards the Drentax Tavern, or in this direction towards the Lost Lamb Barbecue Inn. Well, Yeska. barbecue sounds pretty good. Well, wait, wait. Yeska, Yeska hasn't had the experience of finding his way in town. I think we should let him start it off. Uh, you know what, that's hmm. fair. What's... Yeska is yeah. not here at the moment. Oh yes, this is correct. Yeska seems to be here. looking at his pocket watch. <laughs> Yes, checking well, the weather uh, always. All right. All right. Uh, no, I suppose food would be nice. And you know, loves barbecue. Oh yeah. I'm sure that there's some sort of delicious salad that they have. You know, there's a forest. Nearby. You can barbecue plants, you know. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, my dad did it all the time. But yeah, that's we'll, uh. We'll see what kind of town this really is. Oh. Okay. So what does that a, mean? That's such a strange <laughs> one. It's not like just picking. <laughs> we'll see, indeed. All right. You guys start heading uh, in the direction in this direction. Yep. We all yeah. like barbecue. Um, once you get to about here, you notice that directly to your left is a Diamond Crown uh, Guild station. Uh, oh wow. yeah. This right here. Um, right here, you see the Ruby Apple Trading Company. Just at the corner. Um, right on this corner here, uh, you see the Lost Land Barbecue and Inn. Can I make a stop at the, at the Diamond Crown building, actually? Yep. <laughs> sure. Approaching the Diamond Crown building, there are lights lit on the interior. The gates to the front are currently closed, but that might just be because it's evening. Yeah, I'll knock. And then if it's not locked, I'll enter. Okay. okay. Oh, well, it's, it's just like an iron rock gate. You kind of push the uh, gate open slightly. It's The gate's not currently locked. It's just kind of shuttered for the evening. But as you push the gate open, you can walk to the front uh, entrance if you wish. Yeah, yeah. You walk up and you knock. You wait a few moments and the door is opened. And um, a spindly uh, young gentleman uh, pokes his head up. Uh, yes. Hi. Um, I'm with the Diamond Crown from Fuel Break. I was just wondering if I could use your facilities for a moment, and I'll go ahead and show him my Diamond Crown paper. And He, uh, he takes it and he reads over it real quick. Uh, just uh, give me a moment, right? He sure. uh, pulls his head in and he closes the gate. You wait a few moments, and the gate opens once more. Um... And uh, next to the spindly young man, um, a half orc, uh, half orc man, very well built, um, wearing that same like uh, diamond crown crested armor in the same designs and everything, but it is made of that hardened pine. Um, walks out. I see that Yulebreak has taken you under the wing. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. How may I? How may I assist you? just need to use your facilities really quickly. I just got off a very long uh, airship flight and have not been able to relieve myself since, you know, disembarking, so. Oh, uh, if you need to use the outhouse, it's just down that way. He points, uh, there's a path leading off to the right. Perfect, yeah, thank you. Hi, and welcome, Rimbaron. 
Uh, be careful not to stay out too late, right? You know, you. people keep saying that. I'll keep that in mind. I'll go around to the outhouse. Someone's going to okay. shank you. You walk around the exterior of the building and you see um, just kind of a row of outhouses. Uh, I will go into the third from the left. Sure. And I will close the door. Okay. And I will begin using one of the sigils for the door. Okay. I want to uh-huh. I want to create a sigil there. What's the sigil that you uh, write? It's going to be a stack of logs. <laughs> That's what it's going to look like. Okay. You take a moment, and you arcanely set the sigil. I don't think I set how much time it takes to put down a sigil. So let's just make it. Let's just make it a ten-minute like casting time. Sounds good. Because it placing a, a space onto, like locking this into existence. So after about ten minutes, you've cast the sigil, and it sets into uh, the door. Do you think he's okay? Uh, I'm sure. You know, Tethryn, he has a small stomach, and... Not a man of constitution. Yeah, he's not used to, you know, living on the rough side, I'm sure, so... Probably gets to him. All of you that are currently waiting at the gates... (laughs) I, like, imagine there's just, like, we're standing right outside the (laughs) door. All of you that are kind of waiting on Tethryn, go and roll perception checks for me. Like, uh, no grunting or anything. She's kind of quiet. I think he might be so, so uh, long. I rolled a natural one, so <sighs> not to worry. That's an eight. Am 19. I the bit? Okay, bad to say. Anyone that rolled um, above a 12, you hear to the north. Two of us. <clears throat> Some deep guttural noise. Well, does it sound familiar? I think a bowel movement all? to me. Roll a nature check, Leo. Nature oh, by the way, Emil, um, yeah. what's the sigil for the chamber that was originally there? The sigil for the chamber is a strange, like, uh, here I can draw it real quick. Uh, 